Hello, my name is Paige Wilcox, and today I'm so excited to be talking with you about food cravings. I think that this is something that most of us struggle with, so it's so helpful to understand what causes food cravings and what we can do about them. So I want you to know that I am somebody that absolutely loves food. I love healthy food. I love not so healthy food. And I wholeheartedly believe that there is a place for both in a healthy lifestyle. At Wilcox Wellness and Fitness, our mission is to inspire you to enhance your life by forming healthful habits that you can sustain for a lifetime. We help you lay a foundation of healthy habits. And from there, you can live a limitless lifestyle doing all of the things that you love to do and enjoying the foods that you love to eat. So before we get into the presentation here, I want to share with you what I mean by this. This presentation is going to give you nine strategies to help you eliminate food cravings, but that does not mean that you should not be enjoying the foods that you love. The cravings that I'm talking about is the feeling that controls you, the feeling that's stronger than hunger, that really takes over your thoughts and controls your life more than a food item should. And I'll share with you, back in January for me, I did a big sugar detox for myself. I had gotten into some not so healthy habits, eating a lot of chocolate over the holidays and really even before that. Um, So in January, I started a sugar detox and I didn't eat processed sugar with a few really small exceptions for the entire month of January, February and into March. Like I said, I had gotten to a place where I was eating way too much sugar, chocolate mostly for me, and it was something that I felt like I didn't have control over anymore. The chocolate treat went from being like a special treat that I ate on occasion to something that was just as normal and as the healthy salad that I would eat for lunch. So doing that sugar detox really reset a lot of things for me in a great way. And what I learned was the first five days of that sugar detox were really difficult. Like I said, I did it for January, February, and into March. The first five days were really difficult. And even the first time I tried to do it, I got to day three and broke into the chocolate. Like that's how hard it was. And that's why understanding food cravings is so important. But once I made it through a five-day stretch... I felt so much better. The cravings subsided and I was really back to feeling like myself and being on a regular healthy diet. So I'm really excited to share this presentation with you um, to help you get over these cravings just like I did. So as we go throughout this, please feel free to give me thumbs up or hearts. (laughs) Let me know that you are enjoying the presentation. And also please leave comments. Um, I'm able to see them here as I'm live. And as I'm going through this presentation, I can answer the questions or kind of have a conversation with you about this topic. If not, if you're watching on the replay, um, feel free to type in the comments here that you're watching on the replay so that I know somebody actually watched it. And um, if you have questions or if you have comments, I'll come back into this thread and answer every single comment that you leave. So thanks so much for being here if you are here live. All right, crush your cravings. This is my presentation with nine strategies to help you crush your cravings for good. Like I said, my name is Paige Wilcox. I am the owner of Wilcox Wellness and Fitness in Bangor, Maine. I'm also a franchiser. We have a franchise location in Brunswick, Maine that's owned by the wonderful Allison Hopkins. I am a wife and a mother to two crazy little kids, and I am a lover of all food. So I I'm excited to be chatting with you today. Um, Like I said, if you're here live, let me know that you're here and we can have a nice little conversation. So we are going to be talking about why food cravings happen and what you can do about them. So get excited because I sure am. So food cravings, I'm sure that you've experienced this. They pop up at the most inconvenience time, and they usually involve foods that do nothing to help you reach your health and fitness goals. 
goals. And really, we usually crave foods that make us feel worse after we eat it, eat them, right? Bloated, gross, ready for a nap, and tired. And those food hangovers can last long after we eat the foods. Um, and it, before we get started, it's important to know that your healthy lifestyle is not about depriving yourself of your favorite foods. Like I said, we believe wholeheartedly in the 80-20 rule, meaning that 80% of the time that you're on point with nutrition and exercise, and the other 20% of the time, you really fully enjoy your life without stress, without worry, and enjoying the foods that you love. Enjoying the things that you love in moderation in a way that lets you reach your goals and feel amazing in the process without being completely controlled by your cravings. So what are cravings? Cravings are intense desired desires for specific foods, and these desires feel stronger than normal hunger. In fact, you can have cravings even when you're not hungry at all. Okay, so sorry, I just messed up my presentation. We're back here. Almost everybody has food cravings. We usually don't crave nutrient-dense or healthy foods, so normally you're not going to have a craving for broccoli or carrots or chicken. Instead, we crave highly processed, tasty foods that normally contain a lot of salt, fat, or sugar. Instead of blaming nutrient deficiencies, experts actually believe that cravings are more complex. They're related to our hormones, lack of sleep, our emotions, habits, environmental cues, and much more than that. And we're going to be getting into that here. Even though the reasons are complex, there are super simple, clear-cut steps that you can take to minimize your cravings so that they are less intense and less frequent. And on top of helping you curb your cravings, these steps have the added bonus of improving your overall health, energy, and well-being. So the first craving creator that we're going to talk about is not nourishing yourself enough or not eating enough. Um, A lot of times people go throughout the day and don't eat very well. And then at the end of the day, they have a big meal and they just eat a lot. And really that sets you up for a vicious cycle of cravings and overeating. Undereating happens when you don't follow a regular eating schedule. So we are going to recommend that you start your day every day with breakfast and nourish yourself consistently throughout the day. So start your day with breakfast, get a snack between breakfast and lunch, and between lunch and dinner. And that's going to keep you set up on a schedule where you're well nourished and that you're not setting yourself up for these crazy cravings. Under eating can also happen if you forget to eat because you're too busy, if you skip meals, or if you're intentionally trying to cut your calories because you're trying to drop a few pounds fast. Under eating can lead to you feeling legitimately hungry or even hangry because your blood sugar levels drop. And this can lead to craving high calorie foods. Undereating can also make you start feeling like you actually deserve those extra calories, the fat or your sugary foods, because you haven't eaten enough all day. So to avoid this um, craving trigger, three things that you can do. Eat on a more regular schedule. If weight loss is a goal, remember that lasting results come from sustainable consistency over time, focusing on foods that nourish you well versus a crash diet. And then number three, anticipate when you'll be hungry and have healthy foods on hand before it gets out of control. So think about a few foods that you can stash in your purse or your desk or in your bag or in your glove box that you would have um, really in case of emergency so that you're not resorting to Um, the foods that aren't going to be as healthy for you. So craving creator number two is not having a plan. So we encourage you to have a healthy meal plan um, because this is really going to help you um, feel more structured in the meals that you eat. 
Um, having a meal plan is going to allow you to choose healthier fo foods. And then as an added bonus, it's going to help you save boatloads of money. So really encouraging you to get on point by having a meal plan that you're going to be able to stick to throughout the week. By having a meal plan, the other thing that's so cool about that is you're going to spend a lot less time thinking about food. And when you spend less time thinking about food, you are going to crave less foods. So I think the thing that's been amazing about having a meal plan in our family is that we, we're our minds are freed up so much, not having to worry about what's for dinner and what we're eating throughout the day. Once you get plan used to planning and prepping, you'll be amazed at the peace of mind that it brings you. Um, it's just amazing not to have to stress about what, what your family's going to eat or what you're going to eat in your next meal. Um, so make sure that you have a plan for your meals and snacks ahead of time. Do as much prep as you can do to set yourself up for success and then try to stick to your plan. Another th craving creator is being thirsty. So aim, to, and I know that I've talked about this so many times, but this is a huge thing. Most people and most Americans are chronically dehydrated. If there was one thing that you we're not doing, <laughs> and that is properly hydrating yourself. Just, just do it. Just do it for a week. Drink half your body weight in fluid ounces daily in water and report back to me next Friday and let me know how you're feeling. I know that this can create a massive impact in your life. And if you're not properly hydrated, it is going to be a trigger that's going to cause cravings for not so healthy food for you. Staying hydrated throughout the day can help your body's thirst signals stay on track and in check and also help you feel full, minimizing the risk of cravings to happen. So be sure to track your water intake to make sure that you get at least half your body weight in fluid ounces daily. And then if you feel a craving come on, first drink a glass of water and wait a few minutes and see if that craving dissipates. That's a huge one. Another craving creator is being tired. Shout out to all the other moms and dads out there that hasn't, haven't slept a full night since their first child was born. I am with you a thousand percent. Nobody tells you how hard this is going to be in terms of getting a good night's sleep once you have children. But to the best of your ability, try to get at least seven to nine hours of quality sleep every night. Getting enough sleep is going to have a huge impact on your overall health, energy, and well-being. Unfortunately, poor sleep can be one of the top reasons that your cravings are running wild, and that's because your appetite's affected by your hormones that go up and down over the course of a 24-hour period. Being sleep-deprived disrupts those hormone fluctuations, which affect not just your appetite and cravings, but also your metabolism. So if you're not well-rested, you're going to feel more hungry and have more cravings. Your body's never going to feel fully satisfied when you eat, and the hormone imbalance makes your body believe that there's actually an energy so shortage, so it'll slow down your metabolism and store the food that you eat as fat. So not so fun fact, um, researchers found that severely sleep deprived people as much, are as much as 55% more likely to become obese than people that get enough sleep. So do your best to get seven to eight hours of quality sleep each night. If you can't get enough sleep and you do feel cravings come on, acknowledge your sleep deprivation. Be like, okay, well, I'm tired. I didn't sleep well last night. I... Had my two-year-old was up and then my six-year-old was up. Acknowledge that. Understand that the reason that you're craving certain foods is because you're sleep deprived and do your best to ride it out, making sure that you're well hydrated and then figure out what you can do to get enough sleep the following night. So eating a poor diet also creates cravings for you. Um, 
Eating a poor diet, some of the triggers are drinking soda or other sugary beverages, focusing on calories versus the quality of their calories, and eating a lot of processed foods. Um, This matters mostly because of the nutrients in the food that are keeping you full, especially in the protein, fiber, and healthy fats that they contain. So be sure that you're getting enough of these nutrients, um, and that's going to help you feel satisfied and energy energized to power through your day. Many people believe that carbohydrates cause them to have cravings, but this can be because of the type of carbohydrates that they are choosing. Eating or drinking refined and processed carbs shoot your blood sugar levels up and then back down quickly again, and that can lead to more hunger and more cravings in general. Artificial sweeteners can trick your taste buds and your brain because you taste something that's sweet, but you don't get the associated calories with that. And scientists believe that this can cause some sweeteners to make you cause even more sweet. So we're really going to encourage you to eat whole foods only, eat foods in their most natural state, and try to avoid um, added sugars and then also the fake sugars because this leads to you craving more sugars. Um, So avoid drinking soda, sugary juices, and artificially flavored drinks. Be sure to check the labels and the ingredients for sugar content. Focusing on, focus on eating whole healthy carbs such as fruits, vegetables, beans, legumes, and or whole grains. These contain all of the nutrients that your body needs, plus they contain fiber, which helps keep you feeling full. Um, try to eat all foods in their most natural state with minimal added ingredients. And then make sure that you eat plenty of protein um, and healthy fats with each meal. Protein is a really important one. So studies show that eating protein can reduce your appetite, stop you from overeating, and help reduce your cravings. So be sure to include a good protein source at every meal that you're eating. Good protein sources include plain Greek yogurt, eggs, poultry, fish, legumes, lean grass-fed meat, tofu, peas, and other plant-based protein sources. Craving crusher number six, not getting enough protein. So how we're going to avoid this is try to make sure that you spread your protein across each meal in the day. So every meal that you eat should have a good balance of carbs, fat, and protein. Start the day by making sure that your breakfast contains protein. And then don't get bored with your protein. So mix up your protein choices to find the sources that help keep your appetite at bay and help you feel good too. Um, Craving creator number seven, feeling stressed. This has been a year. I don't know about you, but 2020 (laughs) has been a year for everybody. I think we are all feeling a certain level of stress these days. And stress impacts our overall health, well-being, and the cravings that we experience. Stress doesn't just put you in an overwhelmed mood. It affects your hormones in a way that appears to be linked with cravings, particularly for for sweet uh, foods. Studies show that women in particular are under stressed. We eat more calories and have more cravings than women that don't feel as stressed. In addition to this, stress can cause your body to release excess cortisol, which can lead to weight gain, especially in the belly area. And then the other thing too, is when you're stressed, you probably don't sleep very well. Um, So it's just a double whammy um, in terms of being stressed. So we're all going to experience stress at some point in your life, in in our days, really. Um, but the suggestions are don't wait to deal with the stress. Plan ahead for it. Include stress management techniques in your everyday life. So go for walks outside, meditate, journal, pray, whatever works for you. Include five to ten minutes of deep breathing techniques to help activate your body's re- uh, relaxation response. And then if you find yourself dealing with stress-related cra- cravings, recognize them and do your best to direct yourself towards healthier food choices. Number eight, your environment and your emotions can create cravings. You, so do you know what triggers your cravings? 
You might know a few of them, but chances are that some of the unconscious triggers are making you crave certain foods. So what I'm talking about is craving pizza on Friday nights to celebrate making it through the work week, wanting some ice cream when you feel bored, or or popcorn when you're watching a movie, or maybe it's just knowing that you have cookies in the pantry. Um, Just try to recognize these things and understand the associations and the hidden triggers that you have. These triggers seem automatic, so you don't even think about them. Once you're aware of the triggers, you can anticipate them and have a plan in place for when they strike. So here are some of the common triggers to be aware of. So if you have snack food that's in the house, feeling alone or angry, feeling happy or wanting to celebrate a win, or associating certain foods with specific activities like pizza and bowling, popcorn and movies, wings and football. Um, So to eliminate these cravings, make sure to take a note of your cravings and the circumstances surrounding them and then look for patterns that you can plan and prepare. And then if possible, keep trigger foods out of your house. And then if you do have to have trigger foods, I'm sorry, trigger foods in your home because of someone else or your crazy kids, um, keep them out of sight so that they don't tempt you. Distance yourself from your cravings. Try to go for a walk or brush your teeth, have a big drink of water, or otherwise change up your behavior until your craving passes. Be mindful before you give in to a craving. Ask yourself why you want it. Are you hungry? Are you feeling emotional or stressed? Is there anything else that you could do to satisfy this need for a certain food? If you do decide to eat the food, savor it. Create a distraction-free zone. Turn off the television. Put your phone down and enjoy the food. Chew it slowly. Savor each bite and, and don't don't beat yourself up over this. If you're going to eat a food that you love, sit down, enjoy it, and savor it and love it. Another thing that can trigger cravings is underfueling your training sessions. Exercise can help you reduce your appetite and cravings, but if you but if you exercise intensely or frequently and you don't nourish yourself well for the training session. It actually can do the reverse effect and cause cravings. So just be mindful of this. If you feel extra hungry on the days that you exercise, plan ahead by eating a small snack or well-balanced meal before and after your training session. Be sure to have healthy food options available. Um, Make sure that that has a good balance of carbs, fat, and protein. And then if you think you're overdoing it with your training sessions, consider scaling back so they don't leave you feeling exhausted and famished. So it really all boils down to these three major steps. And Improve your diet so that you're eat, you're well nourished. You're eating a well balanced uh, diet with nutrition, and that you're staying hydrated. This is going to be the big thing that's going to help you stay on point to get rid of these cravings. Practice self care, get and stay well rested, and practice stress management. And then practice self awareness and mindfulness. Mindfulness. Learn your craving triggers and address the underlying issues that might be driving your emotional eating. Being consistent is going to help you avoid temptations, and it won't be long until you notice your cravings start to lessen and maybe even disappear altogether. So I really hope that this presentation was helpful to you. I hope that maybe you've learned a couple new reasons that you're craving certain foods, and I hope maybe you've learned some new techniques to address those issues. Um, Please feel free to leave any comments or questions, and I will be sure to answer those. I hope you all have a great weekend. Take care. Bye.